today, I want to pause the um, Rebuild Broken Life series. Let's invite you to study with me on this Pentecost Sunday, um, the Pentecost experience, an outpouring of power and strength. It's a promise, a prophecy that we see that is will fulfill in our day because we believe that our day is the last day as the, the Lord has said. In Acts chapter 2, verse 17, it said, it shall be come to pass. Note that, that word, it shall come to pass. So that's what God planned, and it will come to pass. In the last day, say God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. What a prophecy. We know and expecting this will come to fulfillment, the great outpour of the Holy Spirit upon our flesh for our time and for this season. You know, Christianity is rooted in four great events. Christmas is a personal entrance of God through His Son into human life. Good Friday is the day that Jesus has offering His body, His blood, His life to bring the work of revelation, reconciliation, and redemption uh, to the lost mankind. And then the third great event is the resurrection. After three days, dying on the cross, burying the tomb, on the third day, Jesus has victoriously resurrected from the dead. And because of that, we will see that Christ has won over the power of sin and death. And the four great events that is powerfully impact mankind is Pentecost, the empowering of God people uh, with the same power which was in Christ through the Holy Spirit, that the church can be the extending arm. The church can be the group of people that continue on the work of Christ here on earth not only do his work, but do greater because he pour out the same spirit that worked in him through the Holy Spirit to touch many life. And so my brothers and sisters, Pentecost is one of the um, event that is powerfully impact the church because the church has been born on that day and on fire for the Lord. Pentecost speak of us of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church. And so today we join millions of people around the world, uh, at least 800 million of spirit-filled uh, Christians that are alive here on planet Earth today celebrate this day, the day of Pentecost, the day that the church has been empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we grateful that the Lord have called, opened our eyes so we can be part of this great army that the Lord using everywhere in the, on the earth to bring the gospel to the poor and broken heart. And we praise God for this wonderful experience. And my purpose today, believe for all of us to be filled for the first time, to be refilled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God, so we can live here and make a difference and we really be the church that the Lord Jesus Christ have built. This was on this day in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit would pour out on 120 followers of Christ who were gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem. This was on this day that the church was born in a blaze of glory. As they obey the instruction from the Lord Jesus Christ, not leave Jerusalem, not attempt to do any kind of ministry 
until be empowered by the Holy Spirit. They gather on the upper room and they pray day and night for 10 days. And on the 10th day, which is the 50th day, since the Passover, uh, since the Lord Jesus died and resurrected, we see that the Holy Spirit begin to be poured out from heaven as the promise from the Father. And as Jesus received the Holy Spirit from the Father, he began to pour out on the church. It's powerfully impact the city of Jerusalem at that time. And many people who um, back in Jerusalem uh, to worship in the temple were impact. And uh, we see the church born on that day. But today we see the average Christian and the average church are somewhere bogged down between Calvary and Pentecost. They have been to Calvary to receive forgiveness of sin. But they have not been to Pentecost for the power. And all kinds of doctrine and all kinds of set of belief that have stopped people from moving on to Pentecost to receive the power. And that's the great work of the enemy to stop the church from being empowered by the Holy Spirit to be useful instrument in God's hand. Bethlehem is mean God with us. Calvary means God for us. But my brother and sister, Pentecost means God in us, God upon us to empower us to make a difference. So if you just there on Bethlehem, you know that God with us. And if your experience with the Lord is just to Calvary uh, to receive the forgiveness of your sin, uh, you just experience God uh, for you. But my brother and sister, we need to go on to Pentecost uh, to receive that God in us and God come in power upon us so we can live the life that he has intended for us to live. And my brother and sister, these pictures have transformed my understanding of the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. And I want to share with you today that these impactful principle and picture so you can see that God have planned and God have a program that we need to get in in order for us to be the true church that the Lord Jesus intend to establish. The book of Acts tells us that God has promised a great outpouring of his spirit in the last day. And about 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit was released upon the earth, revealed Jesus in a powerful way and make new heart of believer near and far. And on that day, it's so impactful that the news is traveled and the church never stopped growing from there. People have been empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit to rise up to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only just by word, but by action, by the power of sight and wonder, they have testified that the Lord Jesus Christ indeed is the living Savior. And my brothers, today we need the same kind of power that the church in Jerusalem received on the first Pentecost so we can make the same impact on people's lives. I shared with you once ago, as a report come in, a statistic show that the last 12 years I had a Vietnamese worker who came to Malaysia to work God allowed us to tap in and work with a group of, of uh, believer missionary and the church in Malaysia to bring the gospel to 225,000 uh, labor workers. And out of that, about 42,000 of them got saved. What a privilege. But my brother and sister, the work is, is so success and fruitful because all the church that have been involved in Malaysia to reach out to the Vietnamese, they are spirit filled. And the people who come over there to work um, and, and, and bring the gospel to the people that include us are spirit filled. And in that environment, 
I, I want to take that as a case study to help you see that uh, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you yield your life and allow Him to work through you, you will see that the impact is beyond understanding. Out of that 42,000 uh, workers that, that have been saved, um, the retention um, is very good. And uh, many returnees have went back to Vietnam and they begin to plant churches. Many of them uh, attend Bible school and become minister, become pastor. And um, uh, in the next three weeks, I will have opportunity, in three weeks I have opportunity to go over there to see many of them come back as delegate, come back as, as pastor, as leader, to come and to receive the words and empowerment as we bring the revival conference um, to Southeast Asia. And we can see in that picture uh, the people life have been impacted and now uh, they turn around and become a blessing to people and impact many lives. We have two great ministries going on uh, that they um, involve with recovery uh, uh, ministry that they minister to the drug addict and thousands of people have been touched, transformed, and set free from drug addiction. And um, many of them uh, now uh, rise up to be a leader and they will be in Malaysia too. I want to share that with you to see that it still work today and work very well. When the church, we appropriate the work of the Holy Spirit and willing to yield our life in His hand and allow Him to lead to move through us. Today we have the Holy Spirit actively among His body, the church. But my brother and sister, uh, I would be very hesitant uh, to call that we have now is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit because it's not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting for the measure of the pouring of the Holy Spirit in the biblical portion that will happen for us here at DBC. That's why we still push in. We continue to press in and want to see and experience that level of empowering from the Holy Spirit. Because my brother and sister, uh, that is the best yet to come for our life and for our church. We continue to do the work but at the same time, we're waiting. One eye, we open to watch where he at work, and we want to run there to join him. So the first thing I want to share with you today is an outpouring of the power and strength. When the Holy Spirit poured out on the church in Jerusalem on the first Pentecost, it's an outpouring of power and strength. Throughout the Bible, we seen the Holy Spirit display in many different ways. His power is, is moved through people. And I want to walk through uh, you to Bi Bible history and, and the, the nation of Israel. So we say that God has empowered and, and appoint people to use them in a mighty way. The Spirit empowers Samson with supernatural human strength uh, that he brought down the temple of Gedon uh, on the uh, Philistine. You see that this man, because of the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, had empowered him. Two hands, two arms, he had bring out the big pillars that hold up the temple and kill more than 3,000 people on that day uh, because the people have plucked his eyes out because he had compromised in his life but the Holy Spirit continue to answer his prayer and empower him uh, to do the work that have been called that um, he will destroy the Palestine. Elijah, we say when empowered by the Holy Spirit, he outran the king chariot. Uh, we know that king chariot is poor by horse. And this human being, empowered by the Holy Spirit, can outran the chariot. We see the same way in the New Testament when Philip was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was able to run and catch up uh, with the eunuch uh, chariots. And we see that 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, people do supernatural things. The courage and the empowerment of God came upon Gideon. And he rallied an army with a weapon that defeat their oppression. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, Gideon and the army, uh, they outnumber, there's nothing can explain the way that the power of the Holy Spirit work in them and through them, that only 300 and they defeat multitude of people of, of the Odyssey army. Deborah, a lone woman in the desert, had been raised up a force for Israel and we see that they're able to uh, destroy the enemy and she come up and be a judge in uh, Israel uh, for 40 years. A woman been filled with the Holy Spirit and make an impact on so many people's lives and, and set free the people from the oppression of the enemy. By the power of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ has displayed the character of God everywhere he goes and to every person that he touched. We can have the same impact in our life when the Holy Spirit has come upon us. How will we be able to minister to the people around us? There are so many needs, so many things that is beyond our human ability. Unless we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, um, we just entertain people. But my brother and sister, we can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to make an impact in their life. Yesterday, I witnessed something that is so holy that I it leaves the impression in my life that I, I, I'm so grateful that God allowed me to witness that. A couple through their life have been so messed up and hurt by people that have been involved in their life. And as a minister to them, invite the Holy Spirit to come and invade our office. That will touch them, to bring healing to their soul, the inner healing. And suddenly we feel the Holy Spirit begin to move on them. The husband cry uncontrolled for 15 minutes. He's a man. He used to be in the Navy for 21 years. Tough guy. But the Holy Spirit begin to empower him and touch his life, and he rise up from that experience. He said, I'm get my healing today. The wife been touched by the Holy Spirit, and, and it's all messy on her makeup and everything, but it's so beautiful that God can reach in, the Holy Spirit can reach in and touch them and transform them. You see, what happened yesterday, no psychologist can do. Because beyond human ability, we cannot do anything when it's come to people's spirit and people's soul. So the spiritual matter is need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so we can be effective. And so my brother and sister, if you want to be useful in the hand of God, this equip, this empowerment from the Holy Spirit is not the, an option. But in order for us and the church to be effective of today, my brother and sister, we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. More and more. Because of open society, America, have received or people from outside, from other country, have brought in idols, demon spirit that, that begin to run around this nation. We say that everything is so uh, crazy right now. And we will continue to get worse. And at the same time, God wants to empower the church so we can bring revival and help and rescue people. And we see that in day to come, that will happen. 
there's a prophet that the Lord has sent to the city of Houston. He have one day before he have a long trip. The Holy Spirit begin to whisper in, in his heart and say, go to Houston. He, from Louisiana, he tried to Houston and get a hotel room and stay in there, pray for the city of Houston, and I will reveal to you things to come. So he came. He spent time one night, and as he, he get in, check into his hotel room and he pray, God begins to show him a vision. And I believe that that will impact the city of Houston uh, in day to come. And we praise God that we have this inside, that we know that even though what's going on is look bad, but the, the best is yet to come. God about to move greatly in the city of Houston. When you have prophet like that, they begin to see and they begin to smell the, the moving and the activity of God. Just like that song, uh, their message is just like, can you hear, can you feel that, that heaven about to touch earth? There will be invasion of the power of the Holy Spirit on earth, on the city of Houston in a very near future. So this prophet God revealed to him, there's two set of wind as you begin to blow in the city of Houston. One dark wind is go through, and it's go through the city hall, go through the mayor, and the spirit of, 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 of um, perversion is beginning to spill out all over the city of Houston. And we see that become reality. This man don't know anything about the equal right ordinance that is happening. But yet at the same time, right after that black wind is blow, there is a blue wind. It's representing the pure and the hearted fire, part, part of the fire, begin to blow in. It's bring restoration, bring healing, and it's bring holiness. And that wind is blow through men and women of God who rise up and allow God to use them to be a blessing to the city. I wonder how many of us in here willing to let God win, blow through your life, cause you to make a difference in this city. You see, unless we see great revival going on in our city, Houston will never be the same. The Houston that we know right now will never be the same. So I challenge you and may the Lord wake each, each and every one of us up. You see, we, we're on borrowed time. We have been take it easy. And we're busy to do different things. But yet at the same, same time, we neglect the community and the city around us. But at the same time, we see that the devil work overtime to destroy everything that is pertain our faith. Yesterday, I have attend a um, graduation ceremony. I stand there, and my heart is grieved when I have the I watch the um, the first student come up and do the the opening prayer, the convocation. There's no mention name. It starts out, thank you, student, thank you, um, parent, thank you, teacher, then principal, and thanks everyone, and then thanks for protect us, and thanks for do this and that. And then at the end, they say, remember, we are great people. No amen, no Jesus name. So I know that that prayer is not even hit the ceiling of Toyota Center. And we live in this day and age that people pray that kind of prayer in America because the pressure not allow Christians to pray in Jesus name. And the prayer that without Jesus name or pray in Jesus name is useless. I stand there and say, oh God, what's going on? In the people in the church of America, while we're on 
in a pleasure time. Everything around us is crumbled. It's about time for us to empower by the Holy Spirit and rise up like Deborah and go up and call the army to summon the army to come together and fight the enemy. Because God wants to use people and through them, the word of God says that the, the sword of God have destroyed the enemy and God have rescued the nation of Israel through the hand and the ministry and the life of this woman. So may God help us. So I thought, okay, well, this girl, she is Chinese, so maybe she prayed that, and in her mind, she prayed to Buddha. And then we have a Hispanic prayer, the calling, closing prayer. So I say, maybe he's been influenced or he is Christian. So my expectation is getting higher and higher, and they say, okay, let's see. And it's the same way. The pray, tell everybody to take off their hat, bow your head, please. And, and, and nothing in that speak or speech or whatever he did yesterday is have anything to do with pray. Everybody take off their cap, bow their head. It's not a pray. There's no mention of God or Holy Spirit or Jesus in that. And my brother and sisters, that is the state of America today. So it's not time for us to just sit around and take it easy and, 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 and think that every be, everything will be okay. Wake up and see that everything around us, the enemy trying to destroy anything, any witness that we have in public or in private. While the church in Jerusalem, because they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, the, the outcome is very different. I'm thinking about Jerusalem at that time. You know that 50 days before this event, that the Holy Spirit come upon the church. Jerusalem is the place that I have been crucified our Savior. They, they want to kill Jesus. So talking about persecution, talk about hard place to practice your life and your belief, I think Jerusalem at that time is the hardest place. But how the, the disciple, the apostle, they can rise up and begin to preach. And Peter point his finger to the leader of Jews, Jews at that time and say, you have crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, but God have a test and God have bring him back from the dead. That's daring. That curse, I believe, has come from the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Because Peter, on the day that Jesus was rest, he denied Jesus three times. What makes the difference between the time that Jesus was arrest, crucify, bury, resurrect, and the time that he rise up and preached the first sermon that bring in 3,000 souls, one sermon. The experience of many of us and the church, a typical church today, never arrive. The experience of beyond Calvary, Pentecost, where I believe that many people get stuck today. Many church, they somehow they, they don't want to go to Pentecost. They don't want to go that far. Maybe feel like it's okay. Be content with what, where we at. So they just stay between Calvary and Pentecost. But Peter and the group of believers in the upper room, they go through Pentecost and their life is totally changed. Not long after that, leaders of the Jewish community have said that these men have turned the world upside down. 
What makes a difference between a group of people who are so fearful hidden inside the room? Every door is closed. To the group of people who stand in the temple, in the city gate, and preach the good news to the people, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And I feel like many of us, we are at that place. And talking about witness to people, we say, forget it, pastor. You can tell me, clean the church or do whatever with witness to people. No. Are you kidding me, witness to people? Now, if that fear is, is still in your life, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, every time the book of Acts tells us that when the Holy Spirit come upon them and fill them, they cast out the fear that they have in their life. So if you are afraid to minister to people, it's about time to be filled or refilled with the Holy Spirit. The second thing that I want to share with you is, is, is the difference when the Holy Spirit is within and upon you. The Gospel of John chapter 14, verse 17, this is what Jesus talked about uh, the Holy Spirit. For he dwell with you and will be in you. But here is again, for he dwell with you and will be in you. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it said, But you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So there are three words, three prepositions here that when you look at, you will see the different ministry that the Holy Spirit can do in our life. Here's a lesson Jesus taught his disciples through about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, the, is a resident counselor. He will lead them, he will give them counsel. And the Greek word uh, is very in interesting. It's a word parakletos. Para, we know that in English, it's a root word para is parasai. It's come with a, a host. Kletos, is what we call. So when you put that two word, these two words together, para kletos, that means someone will call to walk side by side with you. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit come, He will walk side by side with you. He will call to come to walk side by side with you. And para kletos is is the, an expert. It will call in, uh, in case the, an army just been defeated in the, the battle. And they all have no uh, heart, no mind, no fire in them to fight again. They were defeated. Then the paracletosis come call in to encourage the people to rebuild them. So Holy Spirit can do that to help us. Now paracletos can and we call in to the people who need uh, a direction. They need to be lead into something that is worth for them to fight for. And he will give them counsel and come and minister to them. Then another picture that Parakletos is the picture that the Holy Spirit will call into um, our, our life, to the people of God's life to walk side by side with us, to be with us. And that's wonderful. Now we see that, take these proposition to mean that the Holy Spirit was with them prior to the Pentecost. So the Holy Spirit already with the disciple. But we know that prior to the Pentecost, their life lack of character and consistency. One day, they cast out the devil. But on the other occasion, they seem to be somewhat influenced by them. And we look at the case of Peter, we see that. And Peter just, just was used by God 
to cast out demon. And the church got a revelation from God the Father concerning Jesus. And the next thing in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 16, verse 23, the Lord have rebuked Peter and say, Get thee behind me, Satan. But you don't know that you're not work according to the work of God. But the difference is when the Holy Spirit comes up on them to bring the difference and impact their life. When the Spirit come up on them at the later date, they will feel with the power of God. And their life become faithful life. Their loyalty become everlasting loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ to the point that many of them have laid down their life as a martyr for their faith and for their belief and their loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. How is it in your life experience? Is the spirit have so impacted your life that you change him from occasional guests that come visit to the permanent resident. But yet we know that he want more than just a resident. He want to be God your life. How is it your life up until today? If Jesus went invite into your life and still in the living room while you're busy to do your own thing, he have no authority that have been given to him as we surrender our life and allow him to call our shot. Where is the Holy Spirit lately? Is he in the driver's seat? Or in the back seat? Or in the trunk? Are we allowing him to empower, to lead, to use us to be a blessing to people around us? Now let's look at when the Holy Spirit come upon people. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit was come upon you. Notice that, that word come upon is, is the, the word that is, is filled in the book of Acts. It's also filled in the Old Testament when God has selected the people who be used by God in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, God wanted to come upon the Holy Spirit wants to come upon each and every one Christian. So in the New Testament, it's for all of us. It's come upon. When the Holy Spirit come upon somebody, He will give supernatural power. He will give us the supernatural ability to minister to people. And praise God, in the world full of cultural decadence, Spiritual apathy. The church become lukewarm. There exists a good news. I travel enough, witness enough to tell you that there is good news. Many part of the world. Today we have more than 1,200 hot spot in the world. When God moving in a way that the the the, the miracle and the power in the biblical portion is manifest of today that people, you can go there and, and, and observe and see what really going on. The good news is God wants to do is here too. The Holy Spirit of God still move. He continue to convict. He continue to reveal Jesus 
and he would continue to sanctify people and empower the children of God, the believer, so we can be witness for him. Let's take another journey through the history. You see, when the Holy Spirit come upon people, everything changed. When the Holy Spirit come upon Joseph, Joseph stood, recognized, and came out of his pit. Genesis 41 verse 38 said, So Pharaoh asked them, Can we find anyone like this man in whom is the Spirit of God? What Pharaoh said here is, none in Egypt qualify for this job. Joseph became the top choice because the Spirit of God is on him. When the Holy Spirit come upon Moses, Moses encouraged the prophetic. You see, this is God's picture, so you can see here. In the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 17, it says, Then I will come down and talk with you there. That's God talk to Moses. I will take the spirit that is up on you, and I will put the same up on them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. You see, Moses has so many responsibility and tasks that he need people to help. Leading three million people in the desert is a big task. It's a big task. And he needs a lot of help. But note it here that God said, I will come down and talk to you, and I will take the spirit that have come up on you, and I will put up on the leaders, 70 of them. And they will walk and they will they will minister the same way and they will share the burden with you. Boy, I wish that this will happen soon to BBC and for the church here. That the same spirit that God has put upon the leader and the people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, God will do the same. He will put on each and every one in this church. So we all rise up and do not on our strength, to the work in the supernatural strength of the Holy Spirit. Verse 25 to 29, it said, Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders, and this happened. When the spirit rests upon them, that they prophesied, although they never did it so again. But two men have remained in the camp. The name of one is Eldad, and the other name of the other is Medad. And the Spirit rests upon them. Now they were among those listed. But who have not gone out of the tabernacle, yet they prophesy in the camp. So those who left, the Holy Spirit come upon them, they left their office, they not prophesy again. But those who linger in the tabernacle or the tent of meeting, that they continue to be in the presence of God, continue to be refilled and refilled and impact with the presence of God, they continue to prophesy. Verse 27, And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Merdad were prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Verse 29, Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord people were prophet, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses returned to the camp, and he and the elder of Israel. You see here, when the power of God come upon the people, they begin to prophesy. That's exactly what 
Acts chapter 2, verse 17 said, when the Holy Spirit come upon us, we all will rise up and prophesy. And look for that day that all of us here who are filled with the Holy Spirit begin to rise up and prophesy and we will declare the word of God everywhere we go to everyone that we meet in, in touch. You see, in Moses, he have a wish that's already fulfilled that God's Spirit begin to pour out on all of his people. Praise God. When the Holy Spirit come upon the Israelites, listen to Joshua, who enabling him to conquer. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9, now Joshua the son of Nun was filled of the spirit of wisdom, and Moses had laid his hand on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. You see here, Joshua was laid in by Moses, and the Spirit of God come upon him, the Spirit of wisdom, and this called the people to listen to him and, and, and go according to his, uh, as he directed them. And they are able to do the work that God has given to them, the man that God has given them to Moses. When the Spirit come upon Saul, he became a different person. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6 and 7, it said, Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs come to you, that you will do as the occasion demand, for God is with you. You see, King Saul here, he said that when the Spirit of God come upon him and he began to prophesy, he turned into a different man. His life is so changed, so transformed by this experience that he turned into a different man. What an awesome picture. So we see that parallel correspondingly when the Holy Spirit come upon you, he will empower you to become a useful instrument in God. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you will prophesy. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you will conquer and come in and take the promised land that God has promised to you. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you will be so changed that you will be an entire different person altogether. There's more. When the Holy Spirit come upon David, David was anointed to reign as king. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord come upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. You see here when the prophet and the priest, Samuel, come and and bring a, a horn of oil, begin to pour up on David's head and anointed him. From that day on, the Spirit of God come upon David. And he later on anointed two other times uh, from be the king to the king that ruled the whole nation. And God have taken him from the shepherd road into shepherd God people by the anointing in his life. When the Holy Spirit come upon Gideon, Gideon blew the trumpet and won the war. The book of Church, chapter 6, verse 34, said, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpet, and the Abazite gathered behind him. You note it here that Gideon used to be so fearful that he hid in a place that he afraid that people, the enemy, caught him, gathered food. 
But here we see that when God, the Holy Spirit, come upon him, he pick up a trumpet and he blow the trumpet. The anointing caused the people to come and gather around him. And the great army have been built. What an awesome picture for us to see here. That in order for us to be used by God, we have to receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit when he come upon us to empower us. When the Holy Spirit has come upon Samson, Samson broke the rope that bound him. In the book of church, chapter 15, verse 14, when he came to Lehi, the Palestine came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arm became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bone broke loose from his hand. See, so that anointing is give you the ability to do supernatural things. That anointing, that empowering from the Holy Spirit when he come upon you, he will give you the supernatural strength, supernatural ability that your life can touch people, your life can be a blessing to people around you. And that's what we need today. My brother and sister, get ready for at the Spirit fall off on you in this season. You will function under your anointing. You will win the battle and all the things that held you back will be broken. So it's time for us to receive and rise up. Arise with the power of His Spirit that we wouldn't walk like Enoch had walked with God. He's so in tune with God. One day, he walked with God for hundreds of years. So we'll walk here that he lived in fellowship with God. And God so enjoyed that fellowship. One day he said, Enoch, you don't have to return. So God took him away and he go to heaven and spend time, more time with God. We need to rise up and, and believe like Abraham believed. Believe for the son that God has given to him at old age, even though that, that son was asked by God to offer up as an offering. He have no doubt that if God can give the son to him in his old age, God surely can raise that son up after offering to the Lord. Of course, God just has his faith. But Abraham's faith is so amazing that we need people of faith today rise up and believe like Abraham believed. We need the people who are able to stretch out their hand like Moses. Moses, when he faced the Red Sea, and behind his Pharaoh army is, is pursues them. And Moses cry out to God. God said, why you cry out to me? Stretch your staff over the water. He did. And the rest he had part for him. The world, the city of Houston, need people who stretch out their arm like Moses. We need to rise up and shout like Joshua. The shout of victory. The shout that God have instructed them to marching around Jericho seven times. And on the seventh day, march seven times. And at the seventh time, all of them will shout the shout of victory. And the scripture tells us that the wall of Jericho collapsed. They come in and they take the city. We need people to rise up. We need you to rise up and dance like David danced. When he so enjoyed the presence of God and the privilege to worship before God, he danced. And we have a song like we need to dance like David danced. That's where the gate, that's where the door of power begins to wide open for you. 
We need people who fight like Gideon fight. It's about time that we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so we will have warrior, we will have champion produced for today's needs. The world is waiting for a warrior to rise up and fight and help them. The devil has put you the good job to, to put the church to sleep and, and, and preach a very feminist gospel. You know, God no longer warring and you know, no, no, no longer. You've got just, just grace, just love. We just just come by yeah, come together and hug and and and, and come by yeah. my brother and sister people are dying out there and it's like warrior to go out there and help them your family need you to rise up and fight like never before it's time for us to be filled with the holy spirit to rise up and fight like gideon fight we need people who rise up and pray like daniel pray I said yesterday, I stand there, and part of me is, is dying in that service, and they say, what's going on in America? We cannot pray in the name of Jesus anymore. This is supposed to be a Christian country. What really is going on in America? The church has been quiet enough to let people just pushing us, pushing us from the center of this culture of, of America and push us and we almost fall off the edge. We need people to rise up and, and pray like Daniel prayer. For he know that anyone who pray to any other God except the king then they will be killed. Then you'll not only quietly pray, he continued to open his window and not only pray one time in the dark so nobody see him, he opened his window towards Jerusalem and he prayed three times a day until people go and report to the king. They throw him into the den of lions, but God protect him because the power of God is upon him. America need people who rise up and pray like Daniel pray. It's no longer the kind of prayer that, oh God, I lay down my head in this pillow and protect me. Thank you for the meal. Thank you for this. We need warrior who rise up and pray like Daniel pray. For we know that unless heaven touch earth, we're in trouble. America in trouble. Society in trouble and people go to hell in basketball and the church is sleeping. It's time for us to rise up and build like Nehemiah build. Restore world of protection for our life, our family, for our loved one, for this country. Vietnamese, we have a saying. When you eat fruit of a tree, you need to tend that tree. You need to take care of that tree. Like a husband taking care, put fertilize on and, and, and grow that tree. I'm sick and tired of the people who come from other place. They run away from the bad, the sadness of their country. They come here and demand America to change into exactly the same of the country that they run away. By demanding things have to be the way like in their country. Go back and live there. Go back and demand that your head will be cut off. I'm sick and tired of the church. We just let the people of other faiths just push us and push us and we just, okay, okay. And very soon we were back into the corner. The time for the church to rise up, my brothers and sisters. It's time for each and every one of us to stand for righteousness. To stand and fight for things that is worth fight for. For your family, for your children. There's something that is going on in me that I'm so 
I don't know, my brother says, I, I cannot explain. But that, that holy indignation is keep burning inside of me because when I look around, the church state of today is so sad. In the leadership meeting, I share with them a piece of video that I, the information, a piece of video that I saw on the internet. On YouTube, if you if you uh, looking for baby penguins were attacked, and you will see this this baby penguins just hatch and, and, and just born. Four bird land and begin to attack this baby chicken. While other penguins with their tuxedo, they just stand there. The adult, they just stand there and watch it. There's something wrong in that picture. There's something wrong when you let the enemy come in and take your baby, come and take your family, come and take everything that belongs to you, and you just stand there in the name of tolerance. That is not the way it should be. We need to rise up and fight. We need to rise up and let God empower us so we can rise to the occasion and be used by God. I wonder any in this house today want God to use you in that capacity. Then meet me here up front and let pray together and ask the Lord to empower us. Because we're sick and tired of a powerless Christian life that has been going on. We want to be empowered by God so we can go out from here, my brother and sister, and make a difference. We need empowered by the Holy Spirit so we can turn this world upside down again for God. Revival happens everywhere except America. Revival happened and, and, and people able to receive the blessing everywhere except here in America. What happened? What's going on? When I travel, people who come with, with sickness and they're in their wheelchair and they walk out from their wheelchair. And here in our church, we have an old man. We fight for his health and he's still bowed in his wheelchair. Something wrong in this. May God put some fire inside of us that we will rise up, we will fight for his health, symbolically, for the church. When I saw people who have cancer, the last stage of cancer, to pray and that cancer just disappeared just like that. When we come back here in America, we pray and nothing move. Something is going on. But I know that we need an extra dose and an extra measure of the power of the Holy Spirit to come and invade our environment again. So for those of you who say, Pastor, resonate in my heart and I want to be that person I want that spirit filled man and woman of God to be used by God then I invite you to come and let pray to me